All right, well, I want to welcome our Facebook Live crew here. Uh, we are here at Boost Biz Ed in Westminster to provide actionable education. So we have Monica Gutierrez here. Um, hopefully I said that right. I'm mostly. Mostly. Okay. <laughs> we have Monica here uh, to teach us how to leverage events to really grow our business. So Monica is a digital marketing consultant and the owner of Mariposa Marketing, a marketing agency that specializes in small and mid-sized businesses. She has a decade of marketing experience because she started when she was four, uh, working with businesses uh, such as home services, real estate, and very specifically now. Real estate, actually. Real estate is <laughs> the target right now. Mm -hmm. And it ranges from all kinds of things, from fitness and technology to veterinarians. So she has a lot of experience um, working with realtors, maybe named Sergio, perhaps in the future. We'll go with that. Um, sorry to put you on the spot. We'll bring you out later for an official <laughs> intro. Um, so she enjoys working with those business owners and decision makers to build strong marketing strategy, very specifically through Facebook ads and event marketing. So with that, let's uh, bring Monica up to the front of the room. Cool. Well, as you said, my name is Monica Gutierrez, so that was very close. <laughs> um, and I'm with Mariposa Marketing. I'm a digital marketing consultant, and as you said, I work with growing small and mid-sized businesses that uh, a lot of B2C businesses primarily, and working with them to grow their businesses in various ways, primarily Facebook advertising and events. So, hence the how to leverage events to grow your business. And I think through the intros, you, a lot of you had already shared whether or not you'd used events before. As a show of hands, can you tell me if you've already done an event with your business? Yeah? Okay. Awesome. And then how do you feel about all of the marketing options out there? Do you feel a little overwhelmed? Because Confusing. There's, there's so many, right? <laughs> so, um, so that's why I wanted to make events a little bit more accessible and um, Think of it as another way to market your business that is going to be perhaps more productive than other marketing channels. So kind of understand that a little bit better. So the purpose of today is to introduce you to events as an option and then, um, this is me. Um, so to introduce you to events as, as a good option for your business and make it less overwhelming and more successful for you. So with that said, how to leverage events to grow your business. So today, um, and I have handouts over there. That's just to kind of, um, it's a highlight of the slides I have. I'm a big note taker, and so I like to have a base so you don't, you're not frantically taking notes, and you can kind of reference it later and um, take it home with you and, and look at it. And so please use that as a guide. Um, but today we're going to be going over the benefits of events for businesses organizations, ways to incorporate events, and that's a really good way to, um, to I want to get you thinking of ways to, to incorporate them into your specific industry, um, and the types of events you can do, tips to plan a successful event, and top ways to easily promote an event, because as you know, we want them to be successful, right? So getting the word out there is very, very important. So with that said, so a few benefits. Um, the exposure for products and services. So think about your business in terms of just one of the products or services that you have. You could highlight one of those in the form of an event. And this example here, has anybody heard of Colorado Threads? It's, yeah, so they have these, this is the yoga pants. This is at Yoga on the Rocks. Um, I was actually introduced to this company at this event. So. I'm using this example because it specifically worked for me and I bought from them at this event. So that was a good exposure to their product and service. Obviously, um, Yoga on the Rocks, they didn't organize it, but they attended it and that was a very well thought out um, investment for them. They obviously had to pay to be there um, and it was a really good marketing source to get exposure to obviously a ton of yogis who would buy their products later. So um, that's a, a really good option. Just brand exposure. So if you think about, you know, a, a lot of people when they have a business and you think you have to do social media, social media can feel overwhelming, sometimes you don't know what to talk about. Having an event in and of itself is a great way to talk about your business, to say, hey, we're doing this. Um, you've got content there, you've got your brand exposure for uh, other, in, in front of your target audience. 
And then um, the new mentions, and what I mean by new mentions is it's connecting to other, other businesses and organizations that perhaps you're collaborating with, and then they're mentioning your business in the, in the context of this event. Hey, you can come right in, in here. Um, welcome, we just started. Um, and then if you have a retail location, it can increase foot traffic. So it's a good way to get people to come into your business and then also, depending on your business model, sales and leads, which essentially just means increasing your revenue, <laughs> which is uh, another positive benefit to an event. And then reaching a targeted audience. So um, through the event, you're designing it to reach a very specific audience. And that's, if you get anything out of today, think of events in that context. So you're thinking about who you are trying to reach, who's your ideal audience, for your business and then crafting an event to appeal to them. So uh, you can do that through your overall business or even just a segment of perhaps you're doing one, your business does one thing for one specific audience and you just wanna focus on that and bring more of them in. So it's a really good way to be hyper-targeted to get the attention of, a, of an audience that way. And then it's a good way to interact with your current customer base. So you're, um, you are having a reason to talk to them, maybe inviting them somewhere fun, if you're doing a customer appreciation event, that sort of thing, which we'll talk a little bit more about, and um, getting, getting that back and forth interaction. So you're not just a business, you're actually, you have a human element there. So you're interacting with your customers. Okay, now the benefits, um, continuing, because <laughs> there's a lot more, um, you can boost, your SEO, so so search engine optimization. Am I losing anybody by talking about SEO? Okay. <laughs> so um, when you when a lot of times when you're doing an event, you will market it in um, various uh, event calendars. So those backlinks are linking to your website. So that's just naturally helping with your search engine optimization. That's kind of a just an added benefit. You're strengthening your community. Building trust, so again, that that face-to-face, -face, you're creating this human element to your business, which in turn builds trust with your audience. You can also fundraise or generate revenue if you're trying to do a larger event where you're selling tickets. Um, fundraise is an option. This is a this is a flyer there for a fundraiser I helped with a nonprofit, um, a, a humane society in the Salida area, and. Um, they were able to raise a lot of money through that fundraiser. So that's um, one option. They had a really larger event for that. You can establish thought leadership. So um, I know some people have mentioned like having conferences and um, if you have more of a B2B type of business model, that's a good way to connect with um, other thought leaders in your industry and kind of position yourself as a leader in whatever topic your business is, is focusing on and then building an audience so you're getting in touch with more people so those are all you know 11 different reasons to kind of consider doing benefit or to do um, events as a whole for one of your marketing channels so a few ways to incorporate that so what does that look like so you could collaborate with other businesses and make sure they share your audience so that's a, a really good way to it doesn't have to be the same industry. It's probably better if it's not the same industry as, as, or not the same business model as yours, but you're reaching the same audience. And so you're coming together to host an event. You're also sharing the cost, you're sharing the marketing, you're getting exposure to their audience as well. So that's a really good um, way to incorporate them as an, as an introductory way to get in front of um, businesses for events. Um, if you, in terms of the type of event, so think about seasonally, and not just you know Christmas, Thanksgiving, but get a little creative with it. Um, this example here, so this past year, Friday the 13th was in October, which was a few weeks before Halloween, and there's this um, Corvus Clothing and Curiosities, they're kind of like a funky goth type of retail store, and they hosted a Friday the 13th Freak Fest. They joined with a, a cafe that was trying, it was a new location, they were trying to get more people into their venue, so there was a collaboration option. It was kind of seasonal, but it was, it was, not everybody would think to do a Friday the 13th 
type of thing. It was a fun little um, costume party and they had a band and that sort of thing. So that was just a really good way to get exposure. They weren't necessarily trying to sell anything there, but they were able to get a larger and get in front of an, an, a larger audience. So th that example is just to kind of get you thinking, how can you pick some sort of seasonal or cultural or social happening that isn't exactly obvious, that does parallel, again, with your brands that would appeal to your audience? You can also sponsor events. I know somebody had mentioned about sponsoring an event. So the key thing, and I'm pointing this out here, I'm gonna keep reiterating this, remember your audience. So when you're sponsoring an event, Especially if you're a larger business that might have a marketing budget, um, then you might even get approached to sponsor events, and that can seem appealing. Oh, you're, there's, you know, twenty thousand people. They're going to be at this event, and my logo's there. How do you decide if that's a good idea? And the the primary benefit, and I've helped businesses make this decision as well, um, is not at how many people are going to be there. It's who is going to be there. So, and does that description fit who you're trying to reach. And so the more information you have about that target audience, the better. So ask, you know, who's the demographic? Um, do, we, do you have information on their income range? Do you have information on, you know, their age? A lot of, if, if it's a good event, they should be able to provide that information for you of who's gonna be, be there. And then obviously ask questions related to you know, what kind of exposure you're gonna have to them. Are you gonna get an email list? Are you gonna you know, have your logo in, in key places? That sort of thing. But primarily, it's most important is who that audience is. So that, in terms of sponsoring, I can't reiterate that enough. And then obviously hosting your own event. But that doesn't make sense for every business. And so that's why I wanted to kind of give you some ideas on other ways to still incorporate events, or if you're hosting, it can be on a smaller scale. Um, it doesn't have to be, a lot of people think of events, you know, it's like a wedding. <laughs> you're planning, you're renting a location, you're getting a band, you're getting food, and it's this whole, or this thing, and so it's like, oh, I'll do it next year, I'll do it next year. Um, but no, you can kind of sparse it down and make it a little bit more tangible um, and, and easier uh, to do for, for your business. So hosting's an option, but it doesn't have to be elaborate. Okay, so as a segue there, so what are some types of events that you can do? Um, so a few examples, you could do a grand opening or a reopening. So the grand opening is obvious, a lot of businesses do that, but if you've done a recent rebrand, maybe you've um, brought on a really, uh, you're, you're opening up a new location, you're maybe collaborating with, a, with a, another business, maybe you've kind of fused together. So whatever the, the concept is you can reopen and kind of get that excitement going again if things are kind of stale. Um, you can kind of make up a reason to reopen, <laughs> honestly. If, um, if you are in especially a retail location that it's a slow season, you can, you can have you know, exposure that way. Um, a new product or service launch, and that can be in a lot of forms. Um, again, if you have a specific location or you could rent a small space, and have an introduction to that. Maybe you're doing a big giveaway through that. Uh, so thinking of ways you can, it doesn't have to be a tangible product. There could be a service that you're doing if you're not necessarily selling you know, clothes, because um, that's an obvious new product option, but a service option. So how can you incorporate that introduction into your, into your event? Having a huge sale, this um, the epic sale picture there, there's a boutique in Denver that I helped a few years ago, and they, it's over on Pearl Street, and they have what they call an epic sale, 75% off everything, which is pretty huge for a, for a, for a boutique. They do it twice a year <coughs> on a surprise note, and so they have, it's a really good way for them to get in front of um, their, their audience. So what they do is they make it a little bit exclusive. They only email their list I think it's like a week ahead of time. So, so it's this surprise epic sale. They have it structured to where you know, you're only limited to a certain amount of time to be in the boutique. It's kind of a small retail location. Um, but I mean, it's huge and it's a really good way for them to build that, both that camaraderie and also as a kind of a customer appreciation because they're really only making it known to the people who, who shop with them regularly. 
So it's a nice little give back there. And that's something that, you know, they're, they're creating a Facebook page. They're not spending a lot of money advertising it so because it's a little bit more of a customer appreciation thing. So it doesn't have to be huge. Um, then you could also host a chari charity event or do a fundraiser. Um, and this is something, obviously a nonprofit would do this, but you can also think of a way, I helped a business, they sponsored a, a big uh, fundraiser for a nonprofit that the owners of the company just resonated with. And it didn't necessarily align with uh, their business directly, but it, as, a, as a business owner, they, it was just a cause that was important to them. And so it was worth it for them to, to be more involved with that fundraiser instead of just having their logo on a mar piece of marketing material, they participated a lot more. So that's um, an option as well. Um, throwing a big party, just because, because that's fun and why not. Um, again, on brands. Uh, so you know, how can you throw a party that is related to your business in a way that would appeal to your client base in a way? So is there, you know, a band that, uh, you know, kind of fills your target audience a little bit? Is there some sort of location? If there's a big, you know, a new, a I don't know, a new concert, a new, um, a new location of some kind that seems like a fun place. Um, kind of struggling with a better example, but you know, like say there's a new bowling alley down the street and you want to like collaborate with them and have a party for, for people there because you know that your audience might be interested in that particular type of a, a party. Monica, so, Monica, mm -hmm. I took 80 women to the opening of uh, Wonder Woman. That's okay. Uh, okay. There you go. And you're working with women, yeah. um, <laughs> and a business and, sense, right? And they, I offered them the opportunity to donate to the Women's Foundation of Colorado, so I paid for the theater. Okay. They paid for the. Perfect. Uh, That's a great example. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll be kind of struggling there. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, having something like that, where and that was very on brand. I mean, Wonder Woman. If you're working with women yeah. and empowering women. Can you get any? How can you get any better than that? So yeah, that's perfect. Um, and then that actually ties in perfectly with the next one is customer appreciation. Um, I worked before I started my marketing business. I did real estate for many years, and I we did a um, rented out a movie theater also, um, and they did a customer appreciation where um, rented out a theater, and it was kind of like a kids movie, so it was a family friendly. I think it was like a Sunday afternoon. They paid for popcorn and soda and candy for everybody. And it was just exclusive to past clients of the realtor. And it was just simply a, instead of sending a postcard, they did that and took that extra step. So it's that, it's that little bit of, you know, both humanizing your business. You have face-to-face -face time with your clients. So if you're a referral-based business, customer appreciation is huge. And then more than just sending an email or sending something small. I mean, having a big event for past clients with really you're genuinely showing your appreciation. And it, and people, I think having that appreciation, um, that have being that your your intention is to just be genuinely appreciative of them, and then you know referrals will happen after that. It's not necessarily how many clients do we get from this event. It's more you're you're putting it back out there. You're you're positioning your business as you know grateful for your past clients, and then you will probably reap the reward later. So customer appreciation is a really good one in many industries to to kind of confirm that you're staying out there. And then also panel discussions. I think I think was it you that mentioned um, <coughs> beginning in front of uh, <coughs> again in a B two B context. That's really important. Or even just speakers on a relevant topic. There's a uh, outdoor kind of like a mini REI type of company that they so, um, sold sporting equipment and things, and they brought in some people that had uh, that had I think they'd skied down every single 14er um, or something like that. So like outdoor enthusiast type of type of people. They brought them in to just talk about their adventures and show some pictures. And that was a cool, just bring in your customers, and they were physically in the location. So they're in front of the, the retail store with a bunch of their products there. So it's kind of um, bringing them into their space. But then also just providing in interesting information that's relevant to that particular 
audience. So I thought that was nice and on brand. Um, this is another example of a, of a cool event. Um, the Edgewater did a business crawl. So it was um, all of the businesses on this strip did, um, they collaborated together. So again, business collaboration. They made it fun, so it was kind of like a party. They had a band, I think they had some gear, and they created these little passports for people to go, and if they visited, I can't remember how many, like 10 of the businesses, then they were put into a raffle for some prizes, and there was just fun stuff going on at all of the different locations. So it was a really good way for a business um, area to all work together, bring in new clients, they gave them something to market. So they were leading up to the event, you're getting in front of new people. Even if they don't come to the actual crawl, it was a really good way for them to get in front of each other. And then also you're just building that collaboration. So thinking of that, that's another physical location option, but um, you can collab collaborate with other businesses in creative ways to get in front of your audience. Um, so that's some event ideas. So now planning it. So planning can be probably one of the more overwhelming aspects of the event process, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, you, the very most important part is deciding on the goal. So don't, so don't leave here thinking, oh, I have to throw an event for the sake of throwing an event because Monica said I should throw an event and I don't know what to do. <laughs> so think of it as, why are you doing it? So with any, any type of marketing option, the goal is the most important part. So why are you, why do you wanna go to this event? Are you showing appreciation to your customers and that's it? Are you trying to get more exposure to perhaps a new audience, a new um, group of people? Maybe you have a new location, maybe you have a new product and you wanna put it out there in front of this new group of people that your business perhaps wasn't in front of before. Um, are you trying to get sales? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably why many of you are here. <laughs> so if your goal is to get sales from that event, then creating an event that is reaching that goal. So thinking through the process of, we're gonna throw an event, so how within that event are you going to get those sales? It's not just because you have an event, therefore you have sales, so that you need to have a process, a strategy involved at the event in order to get that goal. So decide on why you're doing it and then structuring it accordingly. Um, then timing it right. This, you know, we live in a big city, there's stuff going on all the time. You can't create a, an event that's not going to compete with other people or other events, but you can make sure that you are not conflicting with the timing of an event that is in front of, that is appealing to your audience. So again, who are you trying to reach? Who are you trying to bring? If you know there's something else going on, um, do your very best to not conflict. Um, and then again with the timing, depend. the larger the event, the more time you should buffer in, in terms of how far out you're planning. So if it's a large event, six months, nine months out, and then you know sh shorter ones you can get away with just a few months out. I definitely recommend having a few months before any event, just mostly for the promotional aspect of it. Um, so you can actually have people there. Uh, if you wing it and say, oh, next Saturday, let's have a big sale, and then you're disappointed because nobody showed up, well, you didn't give it enough time. So, so timing it right is kind of both the timing of it and then how far out. Getting support. So, you know, if you're a solopreneur or it's maybe you and a few other people, then recruit some, some volunteers, form a little bit of a committee, especially for a larger event, of people that um, I'm working with a nonprofit right now. We have a committee of volunteers we're meeting once a month up until, you know, a, a month or so before the event, it'll be more often, but just to kind of, it's nice to bounce ideas, it's nice to delegate some work. Um, so having that planning group, don't make it all on your own. And it doesn't have to be somebody you're paying. It could be you know, just a great friend or a colleague that's, that's a part of it too. And then within that, I like to have a big planning session at the very, very beginning. So if you know you're having an event, say you're planning something in nine months, then have that first meeting be one and a half to two hours of just brain dump what are we doing? And then you can kind of organize it from that way. 
That way, it's easier to, to identify what might need to be done in six months. But it's better to know that now than to think, oh, I didn't even, we didn't even ask to, didn't even know we needed a permit for that. We didn't even know we wanted to have beer served and figure out, you know, what kind of licensing we needed in order to do that. So just having that giant brain dump, I think, is a really important aspect of getting the, the planning part going. And then in terms of organizing that group of people, having a timeline, I like to use just Google spreadsheets. It's free, it's easy, it's shareable, people can edit it. So that's just a quick and easy tool to, or you know, if you're a classic Excel person, that's fine. But something that people can see just a visual of this day we need this done and it's assigned to this person and to kind of keep it organized so you're not winging it or assuming that the people that are helping you are on the same page as you, because that can be a problem um, at the final hour that they didn't actually you know, reserve that band or confirm that contract with the caterer or whatever it is. Um, and then, again, so solidifying the big details as soon as possible, um, like location. So kind of think, if you're doing a big event, think like a wedding. You know, you want to get the venue early. Um, with insurance, there's a lot of um, insurance companies that offer just one day event insurance, and that's just like a CYA of, you know, there's going to be people there just in the off chance that it's a larger event, somebody could be injured, that sort of thing. So um, that's a, it, sometimes it's like 50 bucks or something like that. So depending on your event, that's a good thing to keep in mind uh, to protect yourself. And again, starting early. So this was, yep. Is that why we didn't have Bloody Marys here right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> it would have been more fun though, yes. wouldn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, so it depends on the type of event you want. Um, well, uh, and so this, is, this image here is a, an event I did for um, a real estate agent I was working with. We did a fall festival Kind of that was a, a kind of an, a, a customer appreciation slash uh, party for the area they are working in. So a lot of real estate agents, um, you can attest to this, um, will focus on a specific area. And so they threw a big fall festival in the neighborhood that he was um, farming to get that obviously that recognition. But it was free, and they had a lot of fun stuff. There was like a paid bail and games and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's something, and we started planning that like nine months in advance and um, and again with like had a whole committee of people and, and that sort of thing. So that's just an example of one way that you can execute that event and, and it went well because we planned it pretty far in advance. Uh, and then so the day of, even if they're, so recruiting volunteers, even if they're not helping you through the whole planning process, the day of, you know, get your best friend, get your son, your son's friend, you know, whatever, um, whoever you can bring on and give them a specific job. Sometimes you need, you know, ticket people, you need somebody to help clean up. So having those volunteers and then designating one person. I've seen um, kind of some businesses who do events on the fly, and especially if you're in a committee, but there's not one person in charge. It's great to be collaborative in the planning process, but the day of, making all the decisions because they were always be some last minute fire to put out some last minute decision um, and if you're if, if you need to talk to three people for it to happen it's 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 kind of messy and it gets stressful so one person's making that decision whether it be an outside person you're hiring or even just you know you as the as the business owner uh, one person and then some of this is kind of obvious but setting up earlier than you think um, and this is kind of a, a promotional piece, so encouraging the attendees to do event hashtags. Um, so you could even make a little sign that says, you know, take a picture and, and have this hashtag or, or tag us here. And it's just a nice way to get that social media going and making people uh, feel a part of your event. Um, doing live video, so like we're doing here, we've got Facebook Live doing the live video at the event or right before the event. So if it's one where you're trying to draw people out, like that um, Edgewater crawl, that was one where they're trying to get people to come and it was a chunk of time that people could arrive during that chunk of time. So you want to show the look, it's fun, come out now, the band's about to go on, um, kind of getting that hype going. 
And then while the people are there, having just a quick and easy survey, if this is an event you want to do again, feedback is, is valuable. So, and don't ask a ton of questions, make it like three or four quick, even like check boxes, making it a really easy survey um, that, you know, any particular item within the planning process that you're a little unsure of, perhaps the location or the food or the date, um, you know, having that, that feedback from your audience is really helpful. Because right, the, you have a captive audience at that point at the event if you have good attendance. So getting that feedback from them. And then photos. So taking photos is great for the marketing leader. So think of it, always think ahead, how can I leverage this to get people to come next year or to or to have people see that this is this happens, you know? Um, if you don't have a picture of it, then how do people know? So uh, you can, that can be your volunteers with just their phones, or a lot of times you can have a photographer of a um, fundraising event that I helped a few months ago. There was an up and coming photographer that volunteered her time. And because um, she was happy to do that, to get that exposure, and then as a, as a, I guess a thank you. We obviously gave her credit for the those pictures and all of the marketing because we were using her photos. So it's kind of a win-win. So if you can get a professional photographer, then you know at the the day of the event itself, especially if you're the one being running point, you probably don't want to be the one to take pictures too. So if you can delegate that out to either a volunteer or a professional, then that's good. Oh, and then post event. Excuse me. Um, so a lot of times when the event's over, you're like, oh, thank God, <laughs> now it's done. But if you can still you can keep that hype going and make it beneficial for you later. Um, so you know, thanking the people who came, thanking sponsors, and doing that more. You could do that through social media, through the emails. You know, if you're collecting emails at the event itself, thank them for coming. Um, and then you know, tagging people. Like if you tag the collaborators on social media. Uh, another little quick idea is you could do a little like throwback Thursday. Last Thursday when we when we did this, how fun! Um, and then you can start plugging for next year. So you could say even if you don't know the date, stay tuned. We're going to do this next spring or you know wh whenever it's going to be. So you can let people know just that little radar. Obviously, you'll need to remind them and promote it at, for the next time. But if people know, um, especially if they were wanting to go to your event and couldn't make it then they'll be saying, oh man, I didn't go, that looked fun. I'm gonna have to remember to do that for next year. So to kind of uh, let people know how fun it was, how awesome your event was, so they get excited for the next year. So with that, promoting. So you want people to come. This is the main point. Um, the easiest, most free piece of advice I can give you is to create a Facebook event page. Uh, even if it's the smallest event ever, if it's a if it's a one hour event that only a handful of people are going to, it doesn't matter. You can create a Facebook event page. Does everybody have a Facebook business page in here? Yes. Okay. So through that, you can just create an event. I just have a quick little screenshot here. I actually have a PDF um, with all of my promotion um, tips and, and then a walkthrough on how to do a few of these. It's a little bit more how to. I didn't want to get overly granular today in terms of how to do all of this. Um, but um, the event page, super easy to just create it. Um, in terms of why to do that, 41% of Facebook users um, engage with events. And so there's also a Facebook local app that many people use and it's a way that kind of um, brings in all of your, all of the events in your area. So if somebody's thinking, oh, it's Saturday afternoon, like is there, what's going on around me? They can look at um, all of the Facebook events in that area. So it's a good way to just get found. Um, so it, it's very quick to create. Um, you can just, it's very, it walks you through. You have a, a, a photo that you can use or you can upload, definitely have a photo there, and the name and the time. Um, if you have a way for people to register, like um, if they need to purchase tickets, be sure and add the URL there. You can also add keywords related to the type of event it is, so that's another way it can get found. And then that event itself, you can invite people, so people that um, are 
your friends on Facebook, you can also share it on Facebook. So it's just a good tool. It's just housing all of your event information in this quick and easy package that you can easily put out and, um, and then people can say that they're interested or that they're coming and they can invite their friends. So that's a, a very, um, if you do one thing to promote your events, just create a Facebook event page. That's my biggest recommendation. And so within the Facebook page, you can also boost it. And this is something you can do if you have a really short, say you have like $20 through, through your marketing budget, you could boost your event. And that again is a way to get in front of your audience. So it's it's kind of, has, any, has everybody in here boosted a post on Facebook? Or at least know what I'm talking about when I say boost a post? Okay, so it's essentially, it's, it's basically um, a quick, way to advertise anything on Facebook. Um, it has, it's not as in-depth as a Facebook ad, so it's like a snippet of an ad. So you can, you can modify the creative, you can reach a specific audience, and so you can target people, so say you want to do an event in, a, in um, Westminster. We're in Westminster right now, you are in this physical location here, so you don't want to advertise it to everybody. You can just target people in a specific geolocation, in a specific age range, and keep it that simple. You can get more in depth than that too, but it's a really good way to get your event in front of the right people. And you can do that very inexpensively. Um, and so that's a good option to, if you have a, a small marketing budget, to just get that. And a quick strategy for that um, is within the boosting of an event, you have two objective options, and so you can either, and by objective, it's basically what you're telling Facebook you want the purpose of your boost to be. So um, do you want them to optimize to increase awareness, so you wanna reach the most people possible, <coughs> or do you want them to, to, to be optimized to be in front of people who are more likely to buy a ticket? So that's what the objective piece means, you can increase awareness. So a quick strategy is to do that four to six weeks before. So basically all you're doing is saying, hey everybody, this event's happening. Just, just let me know. And um, that's that four to six weeks out. If you are not trying to sell tickets, then that's the only one that you care about. You're just trying to get the word out there. You're optimizing for increasing awareness. And, um, and then people will be, you'll see a lot of, the responses to that would be people like showing that they're interested, people can click a button that says interested, and then all of a sudden there's 50 people interested in your event, and then their friends will see that they're interested in that event, and it kind of you know spreads that way. So that's a really good way to get in front of more people. If you're trying to sell tickets, then a few weeks before, when you're trying to get that final push for people to attend, you can optimize for selling tickets. So that's one um, strategy that I, it's just quick and easy to, to leverage boosting events. And then in addition to those, um, again, I have a, a PDF I can email you if you're interested that has a lot more promotional tips, um, but I wanted to just focus on a handful today. So the next one would be, and this is free, so we like free ways to promote, right? Um, encouraging your audience to promote. So again, using that Facebook event, you can ask people to invite their friends. You can, um, I've had friends do this for me all the time, especially like a concert or something. Your friend can just you send it to you and, um, and invite you to come. So if you're, if you're encouraging your audience uh, or even your friends to say, hey, will you invite people to come to this event that I have? And so they can go in and, um, and invite specific people to that event, which Ooh, means- sorry. Yeah, groups are a great option. Yes, thank you. So yeah, so however that encouraging audience means that you have a group already or if there's a group that is related to your business in a way, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, so just getting that, it's a free promotion tool. And then again, Facebook Live. So you can use this before the event itself, leading up to the event. And so I think you would ask Facebook Live, you can run it directly through your Facebook page and it's something that um, it gets a lot, doing a live video opposed to a static video that you upload later, um, it just tends to get a larger reach with Facebook even with their new algorithm change. 
So uh, it's a good way to build up hype, like say the event's in a month and you want your at the loop, you're at the venue kind of solidifying some some where stuff's going to be and you could kind of do a little, quick little video to say hey this is where the event's going to be the band the band's going to be right here we're going to have this food um any type of you know getting people excited and it's a, another way you know if you're doing marketing for anything content can be difficult right you know like what, are, what do we talk about you don't want to have the same little little event banner come on this day at this time it's this much Done. You know, so how do you get creative with that? How do you get people excited? You can give a little snippet into what they can expect. So doing that through live video is a fun way because you're putting a face um, with your business. You're also, you can show kind of a behind the scenes so people can get excited. So depending on what your event is, um, if you're doing a panel, if you have um, a, more of like a B2B type of event, you can um, interview one of the speakers that are gonna be there. You could talk a little bit about, um, you know, whatever that uh, cause is. So just get people excited, and doing that through Facebook Live um, works really well. And then cross promoting with collaborators. It kind of goes without saying, but I feel like some businesses that collaborate only do this the very final, like the days leading up to the actual event. But you could cross promoting is basically your business is being introduced to that business's audience and vice versa. So that's the benefit of collaboration. You're reaching a whole new group of people. So if they have a large email list, then it's going out to their email list or their audience on social media, or their, um, if they have a physical location, then there's a flyer in front of at, at their location. So kind of thinking of ways to <coughs> get in front of whoever you're collaborating with's audience. And then, so I have a star on this one because it's a little bit more um, advanced, but I want to plug it because um, if you've dabbled in Facebook advertising or you know, or um, you're interested in it at all, you can leverage Facebook ads to get a better return or uh, on your event. Um, so it's kind of like boosting a post, but on steroids. Uh, so you can use Facebook ads, the actual uh, platform. So the, the strategy is to redirect to, to people who go to your registration page. So this is ideal for if you're doing a large event where you're trying to sell tickets. So um, if you have the, a page on your website where people are trying to register, there is a way that you can put the Facebook pixel, so I'm going to talk Facebook for a second, I can answer questions when I'm done. Um, so you can, put the, you can embed the Facebook pixel onto your website, and what it does is it can detect, it can track who goes to that particular page, and then you can run a campaign to people who visited your, your registration page but didn't buy a ticket. Because I mean, think of how many times you've been interested in, in something, and maybe you're like, oh, I'll come back and buy that, and then you totally forget. I do it all the time. So it's kind of the same concept of, if you're shopping online and then you didn't buy you know, that cute blouse and then all of a sudden you see it everywhere, it's a it's, it's similar concept. So, but instead of it being a product, it's, it's you're, you're advertising your events. So it's a really good way to get in front of people who visited your registration page, but they didn't buy your ticket yet. So that's um, my advanced tip for you today. Uh, and that's actually all of the um, promotion tips that I have for you today. Again, I have that PDF. So um, fill out that little form that I gave to everybody if you would like me to email that to you. Um, that's just free, um, no strings attached. And um, I can also send you a little offer on doing a, a promotional consultation if you have events and you want me to get a little bit more in depth with some promotional ideas specific to your industry and the goals of your event, or even helping you come up with what the heck would my goal be. <laughs> That's something I can help with as well. And the Facebook ad piece. Um, I do a lot of Facebook advertising, so that's one of the ways I can help you. But again, I'm Monica Gutierrez with Mara Post Marketing, and thanks for coming. Does anybody have, I think we have a minute or two? Yeah, we have a okay. few minutes for questions, so yeah. um, thank you, Monica. I was taking notes besides oh, the live nice. stream back there. So a uh, couple of quick questions and show of hands. So first so, up. So Monica, do you have any kind of formula for ROI pre-event and post-event? 
return on investment? Ooh. So I guess with any, and this is kind of general to any marketing, um, it depends on your goal. So, so you're asking if, if I have a, a formula for determining if there's a, if a return on your investment. Well, that's too broad though. You need a specific, what kind of event are you doing? What kind of return are you looking for? Yeah. Well, are you trying to just get your word out? Or are you actually selling a ticket? Yes. You've got to be more specific to it. Yeah, so I think, so it's really, it's related. So you can get a, so there's not one, you know, large one, but what you could do is figure out what your goal is and then kind of work backwards from there. So if you're, you're, if you're trying to get increased, sales and so you want to so you have a goal for that increase of sales then then kind of figuring out okay how much do you want to spend on that event how many sales did you get from that event and that would be the way the back of the napkin way to figure out if it was a return so you can but you gotta, you gotta build it on your own throwing out that question <laughs> yeah if there is something <laughs> i don't know if that exists for that if, it's that's hard to determine for many marketing channels okay yeah. it depends on the goal definitely okay that would be like saying, what's the ROI on taking your wife out to dinner? Oh, it has no, to be no, part no, of an ongoing pattern. That's <laughs> that's that, 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 is that, 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 is that, that is not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it all well, depends on the goal right. and the quality. The point, yeah. the point yeah. that I want to make. What kind yeah. of what kind of water bottle of wine are you getting that for that evening? I mean, that but, really can guarantee yeah, 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 the return point on that I would like to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there is a, in there, there is an emotion. In the business, there is a, a little bit of a thinking. Right. So <laughs> There's the, a big difference. The point that I want to make, though, <laughs> is that an event is part of an, a larger picture, an ongoing strategy. Exactly. So I'm very fortunate to have a key client in Mountain View Window and Door. It's a luxury window and door company. So our clients are completely high end. If you're spending $200,000 for some windows and doors, we're dealing with top architects and designers. So just this last month, you had an event in Phoenix. How many people attended? 50. 50 people flying to Phoenix. That's quite an event. But that's part of an ongoing strategy, not just for six months, but for years. Yeah. We have an alumni event after that that she hosts. We have windows and whiskeys with all kind of, the client relationships that we have as a result of that are solidified so that if someone's flying into town to build a home in Aspen, they're saying, this is the client I want you to go with. Yeah. So it's part of an ongoing strategy, and we use a lot of this, and there's things that, that I'm sure we'll use more of. Cool. But Good. it all ties together, the photos, the alumni. We're building a tribe, that thought leadership. We also have the number one podcast for architects and contractors. So it's those relationships that you're meet, making. When I met Victoria at this event, I was privileged to co-host Victoria on a podcast oh. for so the Art of then, Construction. And then you're introduced That has a national, audience, right? global yeah. audience. So it's the expanding yeah. of the relationships and the connections. This gentleman back here with his beet juice. I want to do an event, a health event for our clients to introduce something. So it's those relationships that you're making above and beyond that you would never make with just pitching a product. Well, I'm, I'm glad we brought some discussions on right. yeah, that. So my point. comment is if you do not have a Becky on staff, you need to get a Monica working. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you. Thank you. <laughs> well, one more pitch do you need to that. Do you have any other questions? Do you have like one more question? Anybody? Anybody? All right, I'll ask you. Who's ready to host their own event? There you go. Thank you me. haven't planned for nine months yet. You're not ready. <laughs> You're thinking you want to host well, yeah. One. Who has yeah. good ideas for you? Who has an idea for one? So again, let's uh, so give it up for Monica. Event, oh. I, I want to take a picture. You want me to take a picture of you or do you want to not be in it? Um, take a picture. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with you or? Uh, yeah, let's actually, I didn't think this Please. through. But what are you? Oh. <laughs> Here, I'll just do this. Yeah, okay. Ready? So, wait, do you get everybody? Everybody so say cheese. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there okay, you go. Okay, thank you. See, now I have evidence that I did this today, right? All right, well, thank you all for coming. Let's give it up for Monica again. All right, and I put my notes here. So, um, with that, um, you know, Monica passed out this form. If you, in the light, not in the light. Um, if you want to reach out to her, this is the best way to do it, um, to reach out. So for all the Facebook people, um, look at this, memorize it. No, just comment on the 
Facebook Live, and Monica can reach out to you. And also for all the people in the room, if you want to reach out that way, I'm sure she will be checking it and can okay. share some of the information yeah. that I way. I also have cards well. here, but my info is at the bottom yeah. of that handout too. And then I also want to ask again for all the people here in the room, not the Facebook people, but Facebook people like I do homework in a second, um, make sure you fill out the feedback form for us. This makes sure that my jokes stay bad. Uh -huh. One courtesy laugh, okay. <laughs> One mocking laugh, okay. okay. Um, but feedback up here, so make so we can make this valuable and continue on with all of our locations. Uh, we like to collect this everywhere. Uh, because I didn't get a chance to meet everybody in the room, or for all the uh, allies here, I'll go through that in a second, but Mark, if you want to follow up with any of us. And then the bottom, what are you going to do, what action are you going to take today from what you learned from Monica? So I'm going to pick on a couple of people. Sergio's going to be one of them, so I'm going to pick on him in a minute. Uh, feedback on what you're going to do to take action on the event that you're ready to host tomorrow, right? No, I'm kidding. But what are you going to do? So Sergio, if you want to start coming around, I'm picking on you. you yeah, come, up, come up to the front. What action are you going to take? So this is not a time for another 30-second commercial, but this is for extra exposure to the whole Facebook world, as well as they're going to be able to look at you, call you out later, and say, hey, did you do? Yeah. Whatever it is. So just name, company, and what are you going to do? Yeah. What you get from Sergio today? 8Z Real Estate. So I actually have an event already playing right now um, in three weeks, basically sponsoring this uh, anniversary party. Right? So that's a good way to get exposure. Yeah. And then I'm also doing a client appreciation program where I'm going to take all my clients to a Rockies game in July. So we are excluded. <laughs> you want to come to the game? Does right, he have to buy a house first? No, you can do it. Wait, that's just a client. All right, so Sergio is going to post something on Facebook so we can all go to the game. So, uh -oh. Sure. You have to hey. come. Rock Wild Ticket to Cheap. There you go. Yeah. All right, so who else has feedback they want to share publicly to the world that would be useful for making me shut up, maybe? Well, I'll. I'll talk about it. <laughs> okay, well, just quick name, company, and what are you going to do that we can hold you accountable to? Oh, <laughs> well, my name is Brahma Sharma. I'm actually educating doctors to move away from a trial and error prescribing to personalized prescriptions and reduce adverse drug reactions. So anybody who's on prescription drug, they need to contact me to get a letter to take it to the doctor. What I'm planning to do is maybe host a talk to the doctors, invite some doctors to chat about it. All right, we'll check in on that later. <laughs> so again, everybody on Facebook world, everybody in the room, make sure he does it. Because that's what we're here for, to all make sure we succeed. So with that, um, we're coming up on the end of time, I want to make sure we leave room for networking. Um, this event is free. We plan on it being free for a while. Um, it's educational, but some of the things that we like to do is recognize the allies that help this event go on. So this is the last week that we are here at DaVinci, so I want to make sure that we give them a huge thank you for letting us use this room. They don't charge us for this, uh, but if you do need um, some workspace, they have drop-in, they have full-time offices, they have all kinds of cool stuff here. They also have a referral program. If you know somebody that's looking for an office, they will pay you cash money. Um, I only take a small commission off of that. I'm kidding. Uh yeah. Uh -huh. laugh preemptively. <laughs> right. So that's it. Um, Drew Shockley is the founder of Boost. He actually lives in Oregon now, but he has Call to Action Alliance, so he builds and develops websites or redesigns websites. So his uh, mantra is that your website should drive people to action. So if your website's not driving customers to actually buy whatever it is you do, uh, reach out to Drew Shockley, who has commented quite a bit and is on all the Boost pages as well. Uh, ben does our video stuff here for free, and he is the video expert that almost makes sure Facebook works every time, so I want to thank him for doing this. So Ben, real quick, how do we work with you, and what do you do, and all that kind of stuff, because we skipped you at the beginning. Oops. No worries. Uh, ben Brown, I'm with uh, Canaway. And uh, Canaway is a CBD-rich product. It helps people with uh, quite a few different things, but you may have heard of, like we were talking earlier, seizures, uh, pain management, as well as even getting a good night's sleep. So you can obviously comment on the video, you can contact me directly, or meet me here. Oh, wow. All right, and then obviously, you know, this is my full-time gig because my jokes are so polished. <laughs> All right, when I'm not up here, I actually work with a company called Team National. So what we do is we help businesses 
increase their revenues by expanding their reach either locally or nationally and also get them access to discounts they don't normally get that are only available to some of the largest corporations out there to make sure that they can streamline their profits as well. And then that trickles over into the personal life quite a bit. So if you happen to buy diapers, we can help you get those cheaper too. So um, with that, um, if you want to reach out to me or any of the allies, just mark it on the form and I will make sure that those intros happen for you. And with that, we're going to say goodbye to our Facebook Live people.